Hi, this video is for those of you that are looking for career advice in whether you should be a mobile developer or a web developer. You know that you're interested in programming and software development, but you're not quite sure what the options are. And so stick around and you get to see what some of the things are to consider. My name is Shad Sluter and I'm a professor of software development at Grand Canyon University. I teach both web development and mobile development courses and deal with this question with my students on a daily basis. So let's look at some of the considerations of what you should prepare for and what you should expect in the job market. First of all, let's take a look at some numbers from Stack Overflow. In the survey, they ask questions about what you do as a job and what languages you use and what's changed in the industry. So one piece of data that stands out here is that these people in this survey all stand out as web developers. Category 1, full stack. 2 is back end. 3 is front end. And so those are all people that are working in web development. The next one is about enterprise or desktop applications, so maybe Windows apps. And then finally, in fifth place, we see mobile developers. So what we learn from this is that mobile development is certainly a smaller market for you to find a job, which could be either a good thing because it means you're specialized, or it means a bad thing because there are fewer jobs to apply to. Let's look at some more information to see what that really means. Let's say you're like any business and you're searching for new customers. The most likely thing is that your website will come through Google searches. If the customers like what they see, they return and they type in your URL in your web browser and they come back to your site. Finally, after they've been a customer for some time, they realize that they need your mobile app. It's more for frequent uh, transactions because it's quicker. They have more features perhaps. And so Google would be the first way that somebody might reach your website. They're looking for cheap airline tickets, for instance. And then they, they drop into Expedia, they find a ticket, and they like this service, and they come back to Expedia. And then finally, after they've been using it for some time, they realize, if I just use the mobile device, it's quicker, it's more, you know, more convenient for me. And so the need for mobile, then, goes on this continuum. First of all, the need for new customers is likely met through the website. And then if they want to retain their regular customers by giving them a good experience, they're going to search for a mobile developer to help them that way. And so maybe that explains why there's so many more web developers out there than mobile developers. Also, you can think of what a business might need in mobile development. Things that you can't do with a regular web app. So virtual reality is obviously something that works great with either an expensive headset or one of these cheap ones with your phone. You could create an app that uses GPS signals, such as a self-guided walking tour of a city, or you might have a GPS location application, so this will likely work well on a mobile app and not so much on a web app. Also, you might think of games, especially those kind with gyroscopes or other uh, graphic intensive things, so a mobile app makes sense for this. And then your camera is a great tool on your phone. It's more than just for taking photos, like in this case, uh, for barcode scanning. And so I know that in my instance, uh, I use the Amazon app many times simply because I'm scanning for products. And uh, that just helps me with some data entry. And then finally, the uh, phone will help you with not just virtual reality, but also the augmented reality, where the camera gives you a view of a scene, and then overlaying that are other images. So whether it's Pokemon Go, or in this case, we see a scene of a street, and it tells you where to find coffee shops and other restaurants. So not just decisions about whether your customers are new or returning, but you can also see that a business might search for a mobile developer because they have a unique need. They have an application that can only be met through an, a mobile app. Also think about the skills that you're going to have to create or build if you want to be a developer. So this large circle represents um, a large set of skills that a web developer needs. So think of the languages, whether it's uh, c -sharp, Java, or PHP, JavaScript, and HTML, and CSS. Think of the frameworks. So we're using Java Spring, we're using uh, Laravel, we're working with uh, MVC, we're working with, um, maybe working with uh, Angular and React. So there's tons of things that a web developer can choose from. Well, then the mobile development people have also utilized many of those same skills. And so mobile development maybe has 60 to 70% of the skills that are exactly the same as a web developer. They both work with databases and all kinds of tools like that. And so here's the, here's the logic here. So there are more developers out there who are experienced in building web projects. And they have this big circle of skills. They can do these things. And then the web languages are doing very similar things in mobile development. 
And so the conclusion that many businesses make is that they can transition their experienced team of web developers and put them into a mobile team and create a good solution using the existing employees they have. And so the conclusion of this slide would tell you that it would make sense to become a web developer and learn those skills. And then if you're interested, you can transfer that to mobile development rather than trying to go directly to the mobile development team. So not all the cases, of course, but this would be a general rule. Think of the development trends as well. Native apps versus JavaScript apps. So you might know that you can build applications in many ways. I have another video on that about ways that you can build uh, applications. But let's take a look at the trends. So native apps would say, I would probably guess is probably on a downward trend. They're, perhaps they're the, still the most common way to build an app, but there are other ways that are becoming better and better using tools that developers in web languages and web stacks already know how to do. And so we'll generally call those JavaScript apps. So skills that are specific to Android or iOS are in the native app category. And the web development skills over in your web development department might be good enough for your company to create a good mobile app. And so since there are cross-platform options, there are advantages to using what we call JavaScript apps over the native apps. This slide here is for beginners. So think of the complexity of what you're trying to learn. If you're going to enter into the web development world, you can get started right away, probably today, with your WordPress designer capabilities. So WordPress is basically installing software that somebody else wrote and you configure it. You can have a very powerful website. You can have a very flexible tool for your customers and you don't really even need to have any development coding experience at all. And so you can get started as just a person who's kind of tech savvy. And then you might say, well, there's some people that have some front-end designer work. They, they can do HTML, CSS. They can be very creative and very artistic. And their front-end design means that they're kind of in the next step up. And then you get to the full-stack developer where they're working on database backends. They're more doing full software development. And so the complexity gets higher there. Now contrast that to mobile development. Really, you kind of enter in somewhere in the middle. So an app designer probably is more complex than a front-end designer, but I'll put them in a similar level. And then, of course, the app that has a full back-end is going to be equivalent in, in difficulty to a full-stack stack developer. So the point of this is that it's easier to get started in web development if you really are a beginning student. So mobile maybe is in your future, but it would be easier for you, and you'll probably have more success if you start with web technologies. Also, let's look at the salaries. Of course, that's a big factor, right? What am I going to get paid? And so at salary.com, I did some quick research and I searched for somebody that had a bachelor's degree with one to two years experience and they're looking to become a web applications developer. So the median salary is 84,000. And they project this one particular with one to two years to get about 75 to 82. Of course, that's for Phoenix, Arizona, which might be different than where you live. But we can compare uh, a similar job to mobile development. So here's the mobile stats. Uh, their average is slightly higher. So instead of 84, it's 90. The projected salary for one to two years is also a few thousand dollars more. Same city, same experience, same degree, but a different job. So mobile applications may pay a little bit better, probably because of uh, a scarcity of qualified and experienced people. Now in conclusion then, do you want to be a mobile developer or should you study to be a web developer? Let's look at the advantages. So your mobile customers might be for established businesses or for businesses that have unique capability requirements. For instance, the GPS or virtual reality or they need an app with a camera. And so the challenges then are also greater for a uh, mobile developer. So if you're a beginner, mobile will seem far more complex. There's a lot of pieces to a mobile app. And also, you can look at the end and say there's slightly better pay. But I wouldn't consider it a huge difference based on a major career change. Also, you would think on the advantages of a web developer, there are more widely utilized uh, job titles for web development. There are more jobs available, so there's people out there and a lot of jobs to fill them. Also, you can think that the learning that you do in a web development job will also do you very well in a mobile development. So the skills will transfer. Now the ultimate decision, of course, is up to you and, of course, the company that hires you. 
But think of those when you come consider what you should focus on as maybe a new student or searching for a career change. So I hope that helped you. Put your comments below if you want to tell me about your experience as being web development or mobile development. Is the pay really that much difference? Is the difficulty that much difference as I mentioned? Or is it just a different job with a different application?